everyone, my name is Ashley. I'm an analog collage artist and zine maker, and I have a giant mess in front of me and a giant mess all around me. My office, which is where I do all of my collaging, is completely in shambles right now. There are books and stacks of paper all over the floor. It's hard to walk. And so I wanted to start doing some organizing and some cleaning up this weekend. And while I was cleaning, I came across this stack of paper scraps. I talked about in a video experiencing a pretty significant creative art block as of late, but I'm coming out of right now. And all of the papers on my desk are from collage projects that I tried working on while I was in my creative block that just like never materialized into finished work. And so I thought it would be fun to try to make a collage using all of those rejects, essentially. Um, and I just think it'll be a fun exercise. I think that this might actually work out because a lot of the pieces have similar color stories, so they'll speak to each other really well. And it'll be fun to put some of these things to use because there's a lot of gems in this pile. And for some added fun, I'm working on a cradled wood board. This is 11 by 14 inches. And when we're done with the collage, we're gonna do some resin pours over top because resin pours are currently my favorite thing. So I'm looking just to do something really chill, really casual this evening, make a collage using my rejects. I hope at this point you take out your collage materials and create along with me. All right, so let's go through our reject pile. I feel bad calling it that, but that's what it is. This was just a pile of papers from collages that I tried making that I just cast aside. Let's go through the pile and see what we have and what collage we can make. Uh, starting out with this one, uh, this is water from a sunset. I tried using the sky in something, didn't work out, but I love the water, so kept it. All of this... I don't know, there's more of it. I don't know what I use this for, but I use, I guess, a scrap from this page and then cast aside the rest of it, but I love the texture, so I wanted to keep using it. We have half of a woman's face. I cut out the other half, tried to use it for something, didn't work out, scrapped it, so we have the remaining half of her face that we are going to use today. These animals, I'm not sure what type of big cat this is, leopard, cheetah, whatever, but it's some type of scary animal that's making just, I love the energy that's coming off this page. I can hear this picture. I think I tried cutting out one of the animals and using just a face and that didn't work. So yeah, here it is. I tried cutting out just this face and using it in a project that didn't work out, but I love this so much. And I think I want to use this for texture, maybe so. Or maybe I'll cut out a, a face and put it with a woman. I don't know, but I love this, want to keep it, use it. This is a mountain range, just, just is, put that aside. I use my circle maker to cut out a galaxy background and I have the rest of the scrap. This is half, I think, of Yellowstone Park that I use the colorful center for something, but I wanted to keep the rest. I love the red and orange that's being exhibited here. I think that this could be cool. And this was part of a gigantic um, page from a large coffee table book, and I used half of the people on uh, camels, so maybe we'll use the other half. I don't know. All right, so those are our scraps. Again, I'm kind of optimistic because the color stories are all so similar. I think we could do something interesting. One of my uh, patented abstracty torn paper layer texture things that I do. I feel like I have two very distinct styles. I'm either doing like surreal absurd collage that I do in my zines and my accordion book that I made uh, this weekend, or I'm doing something like this abstracty full of textures with a person at the center. I don't know, it's weird, but we're gonna go with it. That's what we're gonna do today. So I think the main set pieces for me are this woman and these animals. And some configuration. What configuration though? 
I don't know. Um, let's see what else we have here. I actually don't mind these next to each other. I just think that they're overpowering her in a way that I'm not crazy about, that I don't love. So let me just set that aside. And what if we use just the one? I like just the one, the one face next to hers, the contrast, her calm expression, and this animal roaring. That's really interesting. To me, that's really interesting. Let's just kind of tear away some of that excess and then give more of a tattered edge. Now, I typically don't work on boards this large, so the size is a little intimidating to me, so I hope that I'm able to fill the board, not completely, because I do want some of the wood texture to be exposed, but I do want to be able to fill the board with something, so I hope I don't work super small this evening. I'm a little scared. Big things are scary. Okay, let's tear... I really just want the orange and browns from this image. I like them next to each other. And where are my scissors, 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 scissors. I'm going to cut the white border around this page. I'm just thinking out loud at this point. I don't really have a story, no story for this collage is coming to mind. So I'm just playing around with the textures and seeing what I like, seeing if something comes together. Not every collage has to have an elaborate meaning behind it. Sometimes you just kind of go based off of the vibes. I think that's valid and the vibe I wanted was just that, that corner of the woman. Having said what I just said about there not being a story, um, I think a lot of stories in my collages are about exposing someone's interior life, especially the more serious, the more calm, the more somber a photograph that I, of a person that I see, the more I want to explore what's going on inside of them and the more I think what's going on inside of them is chaos <laughs> and noise and color and boldness. And so that's what's coming up with this collage for me right now. Again, no real story, but that's what I'm feeling um, and having the roaring animal included. Okay. We can honestly stop here and I'd be satisfied. I don't really have much more. I, okay, so a lot of collage artists that you see that I'm friends with, I'm thinking of one in particular, but I don't want to call him out, um, always says that he's like not a hoarder, but he keeps literally everything and always talks about keeping your scraps. And I'm the kind of person that never keeps my scraps. I always recycle them. I, I don't even think twice. Whenever I'm done with something, I just cast it aside. So at, at this moment, I'm really glad that I did not give up on these individual collage elements when I was going through my little creative blockage because this is coming, this is really cool. It's not, I really like this. And I don't think I could have made this a month ago or two months ago. So being able to have these resources right now um, it's kind of a relief. So maybe there is something. I think that there is definitely a fine line between keeping everything and holding on to some things. I'll say that. I'm going to hold on to things a little more often now. I want to use this. Okay, 
Honestly, that's it for me. I think that this is the collage. This is... I like this as it is. I don't want to add anything. I don't have much else to add. The only thing, the only other thing I have on my desk that I haven't used is just our camels. Ooh. That's pretty too. Okay, well, whatever. We're going to hold on to this and save this for a later piece. And, um... Oh, I have this, these mountains, but I don't care about them, so set those aside for later. And the rest of it, oh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this. I'm not going to throw this away yet, because um, I still think that this could be cool texture, just all of this together, but not, not right now. So set this aside. And I think that this is our collage. So we are about halfway done. Well, okay, we're about a third of the way done. We're going to do the resin pour. That's the second half. But first, we have to glue this down. So I go through phases when it comes to the adhesives that I use. I want to try all of the glue so I could say that I've tried all of the glue. And I can pick my favorites. It doesn't matter what type of glue or tape you use for your collages as long as it's acid-free and archival. The rest of it is free, a fair game. And I say that because I've seen so many fights and debates in collage spaces over glue it's kind of funny but it's also kind of scary so i want to preface this by say use whatever you want to use i want to use all the things so i could come up with whatever my favorite thing is in the end right now my current favorite glue is the best test paper cement i've been using this exclusively for the last two or three weeks since i've been collaging again since my long break again acid free archival and it keeps everything nice and flat and it has good restickability. So when you glue something down, it takes a second for it to really take hold. So I have some time to like slide things around and move them into place, which is a really important feature for me. So I'm going to glue everything together. the elements have been glued together I honestly couldn't remember if I wanted the animal head closer to the woman or off to the side I went with close to the woman I hope that was the right decision because that's the choice I made I like it but I wasn't sure if that was my intention or not but this is what we went for okay so I used rubber cement to glue the paper on the paper but whenever I'm gluing anything to wood I use my favorite glue for this purpose the Gorilla Glue Spray Adhesive. So I'm going to give it a good shake and then spray the back of this. The collage has been glued to the board and now it's time to prepare it for the resin. Depending on where I find the images, the grade of the paper, I will use different things to seal my collage. Because everything I used came from a book or a magazine with very thick glossy paper, I can get away with doing the easy sealing technique and that is using uh, one or two coats of the Krylon Resistant Clear Acrylic Coating. So I'm going to run outside, spray this down with the coating, give it about 10 minutes to dry, and then we're going to come back and add some resin. All right, sealant is dry, gloves are on, table is prepped, and now it is time to pour on the resin, my absolute favorite part. So with the epoxy resin, you need a one-to-one -one ratio of resin and hardener. For an 11 by 14 board, we need two ounces of resin and two ounces of hardener. So I'm going to pour them in this little plastic measuring cup. Unfortunately, 
I'm lazy and haven't done my second camera setup yet, so I can't show you what it looks like. But you know, you've seen people pour, you've poured things in a cup before, you know what it looks like. Nothing too special. It's just a matter of making sure that everything lines up properly so that the ratio is not messed up in any way. And I like to do a slow pour. So two ounces of resin, which is what I have right now. I will get the second camera up and working, I promise. It's just, tonight's recording was a little bit spontaneous and I didn't really think I would get this far. We're almost at two ounces. Just a little more, a little more. Okay, that was the resin. And I've been using the Art Resin brand lately. This is not a commercial for the Art Resin brand, but they have been my favorite of the resins that I've tried, which I've tried quite a few. I find the final results of the Art Resin to be the best of all the resins that I've used. I'm going to continue buying it, even though it is a little bit expensive in my opinion, but I love this stuff. Okay, two ounces of hardener now to get to our four total ounces. This one I poured in a little bit quickly. So just bringing it closer to my eyes so I can see. Four ounces. All right. And because I'm an extra, extra girly, I love a little razzle-dazzle, so I'm going to sprinkle in some gold glitter into the mixture. When I first started doing resin pours, I would put in so much glitter. I have since learned the error of my ways, and I've just add just the teeniest amount to give it, again, that sparkle, but not overwhelm it too much. Just, just adds a nice touch, in my opinion. And the resin itself gives off this amazing, glassy, glossy finish that makes the final piece look amazing. So it's one of my favorite things to add to a collage. Okay, so we have our resin, our hardener, our glitter. Now we have to mix it all together for three minutes using our nifty resin mixer. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and I'll come back when everything is properly mixed been three minutes our mixture is nice and ready for the best part which is the pour and I like to pour right in the center I just that poured so nicely nice and smooth oh I love it all right and I should mention that I have my board covered with some painter's tape to protect the sides of it so when the resin drips down it's not going to stay in the sides and it's propped up on some cones so that it's not going to drip and cause a puddle right on my table directly and I'm using some silicone placemats. Okay so once you pour the resin on you have about 45 minutes of working time to get it to where you want it to go. It's not going to take us 45 minutes, not even going to take us five minutes. All we're going to do is just spread it around so it's nice and even on the board. And I technically, with an 11 by 4 surface, you're supposed to use five ounces of resin, but I thought that that was too much, so I only used four ounces. And it is going to be a little thin in places, but I would rather use too little than use too much. This is just, uh, this was such an easy job. So I've spread it out and now I'm just Filling in the areas where it's a little sparse. And I'm just eyeballing it at this point. But overall, I think that this is really quite nice as it is. And so my tendency is to not trust myself and like 
I don't want to spread it around and ruin it. This is good as it is. So I'm just using those last little drips to put it in places where it was a little sparse. But it spread nicely, poured nicely. Thank you so much. The Art Collage Gods for making this a very simple and fun collage session for me. I really needed this. Okay. With our resin spread out, our final step is to pop any bubbles, any bubbles <laughs> using a torch. I used to use a heat gun when I did this, and I found that the heat gun would just push the resin around and cause streaks. So I recommend investing in a good torch. It is a little scary because it's a flame, so just be super, super, super careful. And that's it, that's our collage. It's going to take about 24 hours for the resin to cure. That means it's going to dry down and our glossy, glassy surface will be complete. I'll snap a photo so you can see what it looks like when it's all finished, but that's going to be it for me for this evening. I wanna thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe for future content. Make sure to check me out on Instagram and TikTok at Chaotic Collage and my website, www.chaoticcollage.com. And until next time, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.